She's lovely. She's like George O'Brien, isn't she? Ladies and gentlemen, the stewards of the non-sporting group are AKC board members Dr. J. Charles Garvin and Dr. William R. Newman. Please welcome, from Bonita, California, Judge Mr. Andrew Jean Mills. May we have the non-sporting dogs to the ring, please. First, we have the Dalmatian, judged earlier today by Richard Bochamp. The picturesque Dalmatian slick white coat, which is decorated with jet black or liver brown spots, looks like no other breed. While Dalmatians have been used as dogs of war, sentinels, draft dogs, shepherds, sporting dogs, and stage performers, they're best known as coach dogs and firehouse mascots. This is Dalmatian number 35. Now the standard poodle, judged today by Barbara Alderman. Undoubtedly, poodles originated as water retrievers. They come in three sizes. The large or standard poodle gained special fame as a water worker. Poodles have enjoyed universal esteem, which is attested by their variation in size and color. They possess innate intelligence, and their ability to learn is exceptional. This is standard poodle number 31. Now the Sholoist Swinkley, judged today by Hiroshi Kamasato. The Sholo was one of the world's oldest and rarest breeds. In its native Mexico, it is still considered to be a healer in remote villages. Today this breed serves as a guard and companion. They come in toy, miniature, and standard sizes, and they can be hairless or coated. 
Typical Sholo temperament is calm, tranquil, aloof, and attentive. They make excellent companion dogs with moderate exercise and grooming names. This is Sholo number 12. Now the Chinese Sharpei, judged today by Hiroshi Kamasato. The Chinese Sharpei is an ancient breed that has existed for centuries in the southern provinces of China. Sharpei translates roughly into sandpaper-like coat, a unique coat in the dog world. Along with a hippopotamus muzzle, they possess loose skin and wrinkles over the head, neck, and withers. Sharpei are regal and lordly, while being extremely devoted to their family. This is Chinese Sharpei, number 36. Here is the Finnish Spitz, judged today by Richard Beauchamp. Finnish Spitz, which present a fox-like appearance, have long been used to hunt small game and birds, though they are primarily house dogs and faithful companions. This red gold dog is the national dog of Finland, where they still work as natural bark pointers. They direct hunters to the location of tree game with a distinctive ringing bark or yod, and point at the game as the hunter approaches. This is Finnish Spence, number seven. We now have the Case Hound, judged by Charles Trotter. The Case Hound, the national dog of Holland, is a hardy breed possessing a double coat and fox-like expression. A unique characteristic of this breed are spectacle-like markings that help give them an inquisitive expression. A sensible watchdog and ideal family companion, Case Hounden serve as barge dogs on the small vessels that were found in great numbers on the Rhine River. Photographs up to this is Case Hunt, number 20. And here we have the Chow Chow, judged by Hiroshi Kamasato. Chow Chows were first bred in northern China more than 2,000 years ago to hunt, herd, and protect the home. They are serious, dignified, and proud. Because their background is one of hard work and little fun with humans, they can seem aloof. The breed comes in two coat types, rough and smooth. The blue-black tongue is one of the Chow's most distinguishing features. This is Chow Chow, number five. This is 
Looks like that cocky. Now the Tibetan Terrier, the breed judged earlier today by Hiroshi Kamisato. Bred to be companions, Tibetan Terriers are happy, outgoing dogs who are considered family members in their native Tibet. Tibetan Terriers are actually not Terriers. They are called by that name because of their size and because Western countries preferred it to their Tibetan names of Luckbringer and Holy Dog. Their coat, which is long and shaggy, may be straight or wavy, and of any color. TTs are extremely agile and usually rather quiet. This is Tibetan Terrier number 12. And now the Shiba Inu. They were judged today by Richard Bochamp. Shiba Inu have been favorites with the Japanese for centuries. They are considered to be the smallest and oldest of Japan's dogs. Their keen senses and ability to maneuver through steep hills and mountain slopes have repeatedly shown the Shiba to be a superb hunting dog. This is Shiba Inu, number 16. Thank you. Take a moment. And here we have the miniature poodle, judged today by Barbara Olderman. The miniature poodle has the same fine qualities of the standard poodle. They were used for scenting and digging up truffle, an edible fungus considered to be a great delicacy. The unique coat of the poodle consists of a profuse top coat, wiry in texture, and composed of thick, close curls. The undercoat is woolly and warm. This is miniature poodle number 16. There's a text now. Rosie, what would you? What would you feel? Believe that on. Just take that for me. Can you just stay taken there? Can you bring that in between the back? Yeah. Yes. Earlier today, the American Eskimo dog was judged by Charles Trotter. The American Eskimo dog is one of the Nordic breeds and is nicknamed the Eski. Their sparkling white coat has great crowd appeal, which made them extremely popular for use in dog acts and circuses. A loving companion, the Eski possesses innate intelligence, unsurpassed agility, and is highly trainable. This is American Eskimo dog number five. And now the Lobchen, judged today by Andrew Brace. The earliest evidence of the Lobchen traces to the 1400s in Germany and Holland. Besides written references, the breed can be found in artwork dating back to medieval times. 
The Lochin has enjoyed popularity for many centuries as a companion dog of the ruling and middle class alike. They got their name from their trim, not for possessing a fierce, lion-like personality. Lochin are small, happy, and lively dogs who love to be part of their owner's lives. This is Lochin, number eight. Here is the Bichon Frise, judged by Richard Beauchamp. The Bichon Frise is one of the many breeds originating from the Mediterranean area. They are a small, sturdy, white powder puff of a dog, possessing a merry temperament and an inquisitive expression. Bichons are dogs of great appeal, and throughout the centuries have favored pets and royalty in the various European countries. Here is Bichon Frise, number 35. Now the Lhasa Apso, judged today by Dr. John Ayoya. The heavily coated Lhasa Apso has its origins in Tibet, a country of huge mountains and deep valleys with intense cold and heat. Lhasa Apsos were kept as special guards inside of monasteries and dwellings because of their intelligence, acute hearing, and uncanny ability to distinguish friend from foe. This is Lhasa Apso number seven. Take him around for me, please. This is the Norwegian Lundehund, judged today by Kiki Khan. The Norwegian Lundehund is a small and agile spitz breed with several unique characteristics, a combination not found in any other dog. Features such as six toes on each foot, prick ears that fold clothes forward or backward at will, and the ability to tip the head backward until it touches the backbone all help them perform their original job as puffin hunter. Today, Lundehunds loyal and faithful companions with great personality and an even disposition. Norwegian Lundehund, number five. Here is the Skipper Key, today judged by Barbara Alderman. Skipper Keys, whose name means Little Captain in Flemish, were popular companions on canal boats where they served as guardians. The general appearance of Skipper Keys is distinctive due to their black, short, thickest bodies 
and fox-like heads. Skips are very fond of children, and they're devoted to their charges. This is Skipper Key, number 15. This is the Tibetan Spaniel, a breed today judged by Charles Trotter. The Tibetan Spaniels existed for thousands of years in Tibetan China and holds an important position in the Tibetan culture. Tibbies are intelligent and loving. They are not lap dogs, even though they are small. They are brave watchdogs and like to take walks and play. Tibetan Spaniels get along very well with other animals, especially other dogs. <coughs> This is Tibetan Spaniel, number 21. And now the French Bulldog, judged today by Anne Ingram. Bred principally as pets and companions, French Bulldogs are remarkably intelligent and make good watchdogs. They have distinctive bat ears, a feature that accentuates the individuality of this breed. As a rule, Frenchies are affectionate, playful, and sweet-tempered. This is French Bulldog, number 37. The Boston Terrier, judged today by Robert Hutton. Boston Terriers are one of the few breeds to originate in the United States. The prominent markings of this breed are a distinctive feature, and Bostons are lovingly referred to as the Tuxedo Dog. They have a characteristically gentle disposition that won them the name of American Gentlemen. Bostons are lively, highly intelligent companions. This is Boston Terrier, Number seven. And now the Bulldog, judged earlier by Richard Beauchamp. The Bulldog of today represents over a century of dedicated breeding. Originally used in connection with bull baiting, Bulldogs faced extinction in the 1800s when dog fighting as a sport became illegal in England. To preserve the breed, it was necessary to breed out aggressiveness while retaining the courage and tenacity so much admired in this breed. This is Bulldog number 15. Take them around. 
Judge Andrew G. Mills has chosen his group first, the Standard Poodle. The Tibetan Spaniel takes second. The Skipper Thee is third place, and fourth goes to the Chinese Sharpei. Congratulations to all our winners in the non-sporting group. So there you have it. We have four winners advancing to best in show. Saluki, Offen Pincher, Black Cocker, and a standard poodle. The dog, not the same dog, but yeah, the same yeah. breed that won last year. Exactly. Black standard poodle. This standard poodle is from Spain. It's its first time competing here in the United States. It's a champion overseas. What do you think of those four so far? Do you have a favorite of the four that have advanced? No, I just love them. You don't have to give me that look. <laughs> I just asked the question. You no, I'm All right. impartial. Well, we appreciate everyone joining us here on Ustream. In fact, we had nearly 300,000 views. If you're wondering about the top countries, we're viewed all around the world. Brazil, Mexico, Canada, and the number one country, United States of America. Top states, even more specific, New York, Texas, Florida, in California. So thank you to all of you who checked out our Ustream and you can do it again tomorrow night as we find out our final three. Yes, please. The Wirefox Carrier from Malta. The Pembroke Welsh Corgi from Russia. Please. The Tibetan Spaniel from Switzerland. This is exciting Tosa Inu to compete on this world stage, accompanied by Dr. Lloyd Vermeer Soroki. 
this must be done. Finland races tonight's event with this Lhasa Apso. And our judge from Finland, Dr. Kirsi Seino, at his side. It is most fitting that representing Italy is an Italian Greyhound. Please welcome from Japan, this Siberian Husky with his owner. May we have a warm welcome for the dog from Malta, one of the winners of the European Qualifiers event, this wild fox hair terrier. Entering the ring now, representing Russia, a Pembroke Welsh Corgi, joined by Mitsoga Proskoryakova, general manager of the Russian Kennel Club. Next, we welcome from Switzerland, this Tibetan Spaniel, and this Christine Rossier from the Swiss Kennel Club, carrying the flag. And the last competitor for section one is the Bulldog from Thailand with Mrs. Wandia Bosakonoto of the Kennel Club of Thailand that she enters the ring. We now have the contestants from section two to be announced. Entering now the ring is the standard poodle from Denmark. And from Hungary is the handsome old and the sheep dog with the Olympic gold medal winner, Miss Susanna Barros, sharing our dog world's Olympic style moment. From Malaysia, we welcome the Siberian Husky, escorted by Larry Ewan, president of the Malaysian Kennel Club. Representing Mexico is the Basset Hound, with Juan Luis Martinez from the Mexican Kennel Club carrying the flag. Welcome from the Philippines, the Beagle, escorted by Senor Agosto Benedicto Santos III, President of the Phil Philippine Kennel Club. Here from Poland comes the Irish Center. With us tonight from the Republic of South Korea is the Akita. The dog representing Spain is this lovely Pomeranian. Also in this section, from the UK, is the Bichon Frise. And from the UK as well, the Crufts BIS winner, we have this, Lhasa Apso. Ladies and gentlemen, these great dogs make up section two. May we now have the Section 3 dogs enter the ring. Let's give a warm and enthusiastic welcome for the Section 3 contenders. From Argentina, we bring you this Doberman Pincher. Sharing the flag duties is Enrico Filippini from the Argentine Kennel Club. From Brazil comes another great Doberman Pincher. Please welcome the French entry. A couture de Jouleur with Monsieur Christian Ademondou as their escort and the president of the French Kennel Club. From Germany, please welcome the Cavalier King Charles Spaniel, along with a very enthusiastic professor, Dr. Peter Friedrich, president of the German Kennel Club. May we have the Akita from the Netherlands enter the ring. All the way from New Zealand, we bring you the Miniature Poodle and Mr. Owen Dance, President of the New Zealand Kennel Club, as the proud flag bearer. From Puerto Rico is the French Bulldog, Senor Roberto Velez Pico of the Puerto Rican Kennel Club. From South Africa, we welcome this Maltese and his owners. Please welcome the Wire Fox Terrier from Sweden. We close this group with another FCI section show winner. Representing Thailand is this Yorkshire Terrier, winner of the Asian event. 
Here with us as the winner of the FCI European Section Show is the Lhasa Oxo. We now welcome to the opening ceremony our Section 4 contenders. Leading off Section 4, please welcome from Belgium, the Pug, escorted by Bjorn Loken. The Bull Mastiff joins us tonight from Bulgaria as one of the European qualifiers. The Bichon Frise has the luck of the Irish and is representing Ireland with both of our Irish judges, Mr. Harry O'Donoghue and Miss Anne Ingram escorting him. The winner of the FCI section show for the Americas is the Mexican Afghan Hound for the president of the Mexican Kennel Club, Senor Jose Luis Pido. Norway sends the Kerry Blue Terrier to be with us tonight. And Portugal sends us their Blanco Italiano to take the challenge. And with him is the president of the Portuguese Kennel Club and one of our judges, Mrs. Carla Molinari. Please welcome a dog that has challenged the world with us before. The World Dog Show winner from Sweden, the Saluki. This toy poodle represents Taiwan with his proud breeder owner carrying the flag. And now, here to bring up the hometown crowd is the standard poodle representing the USA, making his last appearance as the U.S. flag bearer before his retirement is our chief operating officer of the American Kennel Club, Mr. John Lyons. And last but not least, the Pyrenees Mountain Dog comes to compete, the Great Pyrenees, comes to compete as the winner of the 2012 North American Yukonoma Breeder Stakes. Ladies and gentlemen, before you are the 2012 Yukonoma World Challenge contenders. These magnificent dogs came from around the world to be here tonight. Please join me in showing them a much deserved acknowledgement of their greatness. We will have five minutes for photographers to capture this extraordinary moment, and that time begins now. What's that?
So we're getting ready for the international flavor competition. Why is this so unique and special to this event? Well, first of all, it's the only competition in the United States where you have foreign dogs competing. And you also now have all the, the, the top dogs from each country is here. So it's just a very special group of dogs you won't see anywhere else in the world together ever again. Now, are these, these dogs and handlers judged differently than in other competitions that we'll see later tonight? No. In some other countries, that the standard, the breed standard that the dog is judged by is a little bit different. But uh, besides that, everything's the same. The presentation's the same. The evaluation is the same. Now, I know the United States champion from last year here at the AKC Benuba National Championship was our representative, one of two. What about the other countries? How do they select which dog and which handler represented them tonight? They either choose the dog that ends up being number one in the country, or they select a specific dog show and say the winner of that dog show is the representative. Now, as the world gets smaller because of technology, what have you learned as far as other countries treating their dogs differently, training their dogs differently, feeding them different food? Well, you know, what I found most is that because of our shrinking globe, the dog world, they emulate the United States a lot because we were more fancy in our attire, we had different ways of showing dogs, we groomed our dogs a little differently, and so I think that actually these dogs are more shown now like they're shown in the United States. All right, so we're all looking at all these beautiful dogs right now, and their handlers are standing by with such pride and enthusiasm as we wait for the judge's decision here in our international competition. 